Greetings, Trinity Lutheran Church, the community of Blue Earth, and all those joining us at home. A few announcements before we gather for worship. First, we ask that you keep our day camp participants, our leaders, our volunteers, and our day campers in your prayers. We have a chance to have VBS this summer, and so they are learning about how God makes us new. So please keep all those participating in, our, in your prayers. Also, we continue to gather responses for our worship survey. This was emailed out as well as sent out with our newsletter. Um, if you would like a copy and you have partaken in our online or BevCom worship services, please let the church know and we will make sure that you have access to that. We want to have an opportunity to think about what equipment we need to purchase in the future, what parts of online worship are really appreciated so we can continue to do those pieces into fall and continue to help people connect wherever they may be. So please, if you're willing to take part in that worship survey, or if you just want to send us a note at Trinity of what parts you appreciate about our online or BevCom worship, all that information will be collected and help us discern the way ahead. A couple of other announcements. We do have our signups at church for the fair stand. We are doing two shifts with a break in the afternoon during the county fair. Beef commercials and brownies and ice cream are going to be served along with a few other items and it will be done a little bit differently this year. Our workers will be in the stand and serving the public outside of the stand. So we hope you will join us at the fair. Also on the 21st of July, we are having a prayer service. This is part of Intern Pastor Sarah's internship project, and you will see that reflected not only in that Wednesday night service, but also on Sunday morning and online. So we invite you to take part in whatever service fits you and to use prayer as a way to connect with God. There is more information about that in your July newsletter. Those are all the announcements I have at this time. Let us gather for worship. This past Sunday, Trinity had the baptism of Easton Michael Stittman. And so as we recognize the young among us who are getting baptized, we also take time to remember our baptism. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. By the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By your water and the word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heir of your promise as servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. At this time, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead as a remembrance of your baptism. Let us pray. Oh God, from you come all holy desire, all good counsels, and all just works. 
Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Others. 
So for everyone here tonight, I want you to take a finger and make the sign of the cross on your forehead. And then turn to the people sitting near you and draw a cross in the air towards them like this. And say, Jesus loves you and so do I. When we're baptized, we have a cross just like that drawn on our foreheads because we are a child of God and sealed by the cross of Christ. Our God is with us in every single thing that we do, encouraging us to love one another and to love ourselves even when that is hard to do. And so when you find yourself in one of those situations, think to yourself, I am a child of God. They are a child of God. How can we bring about God's love in this moment? Let's have a word of prayer together. Dear God, you love the whole world and everything and everyone in it. Help us to remember how very loved we are and help us to share that love with everyone around us, especially when it's hard. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Of the guard 
with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one knows the reason. I'm guessing this sounds familiar to many of you. It is, of course, from Dr. Seuss's classic children's book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And it seems a little odd to place this children's story, this Christmas story, in July and, of all things, next to our gospel text today, which is admittedly one of the more gruesome ones, but bear with me. I think both of these stories have lessons for us to learn. Lessons about truth and power, grudges and image, and the opportunity to open our hearts. The Grinch is a grouchy, Christmas-hating grudge holder. He lives on top of a mountain, looking down on Whoville, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown. The Grinch's hatred consumes him. It becomes his identity. He's a mean one, Mr. Grinch. He cannot see past this hatred. Everything that he says and does is about hating the Who's and hating Christmas. His heart was two sizes too small. On the other hand, we have Herod, a powerful ruler who doesn't agree with everything that John the Baptist says. But he is intrigued by him and decides to keep him around. Herod's wife holds a grudge against John the Baptist. She wanted to kill him, but she couldn't because her husband kept protecting him. And so she stewed in that hatred. It consumed her. Perhaps we could say that her heart was two sizes too small. The Grinch comes up with a scheme to steal Christmas, to steal all of the decorations and presents and holiday food from the homes down in Whoville. And Herodias, Herod's wife, comes up with a scheme to get rid of John the Baptist. She finds a way to keep Herod from breaking an oath and from shattering a piece of his public image. As the Grinch is carrying out his plan, he encounters little Cindy Lou Who, who asks Santa, why are you taking our tree? The Grinch here has an opportunity to change course and to do what is right, but he does not. He lies to Cindy Lou Who and says that he is fixing it and will bring it right back, but he's not coming back. And he continues on his way. Herod backs himself into a corner with this promise that he has made to give his stepdaughter whatever she wants. Herod fears losing his image that he has so carefully created of being a powerful ruler who keeps his promises and makes things happen. It would be one thing for him to say no to this request in front of just his family, but he 
he is surrounded by guests, by other powerful people in his community. In this moment, Herod has an opportunity to change course, to break his promise to his stepdaughter for the sake of doing what is right, to say no. But he gives in to that pressure of holding on to his power. And despite being deeply grieved about it, he lets it happen. The Grinch goes back up that mountain and expects to hear the Who's down in Whoville boo-hooing about their missing toys and decorations and food. And he does hear a sound coming from down the mountain, but it's not crying as he expected. No, the Who's are singing. Christmas came anyway. And so the story goes on, maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And so our grouchy, grudge-bearing main character is redeemed. He has learned his lesson in a way that Herod did not. But what would have happened if Herod had made a different choice in that moment? What if he had done what he knew was right instead of what was easiest or what would maintain his own power and status? What if Herodias had taken a different path and not let her grudge consume her? Would their hearts have grown three sizes? Now, this passage in Mark comes in the middle of Jesus preparing his disciples for their ministry, warning them that telling the truth, that living out the gospel is not always the easy path. Because gospel good news does not always sound like comfy, happy good news to those who are in power, like Herod. And sometimes there are real world consequences for speaking gospel truth to power to those who feel threatened by it. But speak out, we must. How many times in our own lives do we come across those situations where we have to make a choice between doing what is easy or desirable or doing what is right? Between what keeps us comfortable or what is uncomfortable for us but improves someone else's well-being alongside ours? between a choice that will help us to maintain that carefully constructed image that we put out into the world, or the choice that will tear down that false image of ourselves and yet reveal the image of God in us and in everyone that we encounter. That choice between gaining power for ourselves or bringing ourselves down a notch in order to lift other people up. How much of our words and our actions focus entirely on ourselves, on gaining things for ourselves and for our own purposes, instead of sharing the love of God with others? But here's the good news. In our baptism, we are promised that God is with us in all things, calling us to truth and to love one another, yes, and also walking with us when that work is easier said than done. Because it is vulnerable, 
hard work to let our hearts grow like that. But there is enough room in our hearts for those hearts to continue to expand and to grow not just three sizes, but infinitely. To listen to those around us and to hear all of God's creation singing and to know that it is good. We have the opportunity to make a different choice than Herod or Herodias. It is never too late to step back and to ask ourselves, not just with those big moral questions, but with everything that we do, how does this thing that I am about to say or do bring about God's love in the world? How does this bring about God's love in the world? How is this helping hearts to grow? May God's love continue to expand our hearts beyond what we ever knew. And may that expansive love lead us to bring God's love into the world. Amen. Let us come before the triune of God in prayer. Holy Parent, you welcome your people into one family and gather all things to yourself. Bestow your grace upon your beloved church, lavish your wisdom upon us, and redeem us from our faults, that by our witness all might praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Awesome Creator, you steadfastly tend the smallest of seeds and the mightiest of sycamore trees. Spring up green growth from the earth, nourish and nurse the growth of fruit, gain and other crops, and bless the work of farmers and laborers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, turn the ears of those who are in power to the voices of prophets in our own day. Protect those who speak difficult truths when it is risky to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, you are near to those who endure difficulty. Comfort all who are survivors of violence, guard the refugee and the immigrant, and protect all those who are victims of prejudice and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for this holy house and all those who worship here. We pray for those whose efforts behind the scenes often go unnoticed, for our staff members and for all of our volunteers. We also pray for who will participate in day camp this week, the children, volunteers, leaders, and camp counselors. Be with them in their playing and learning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the saints, martyrs, and prophets who have died in the faith. 
We remember those in this community who have recently died, especially those we remember in our hearts. United with them is God's children. Assure us that we are yours forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, and trust in you and abide in grace. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing, the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.